The shooting of Tyneside hardman Viv Graham outside a Wall's End pub on New Year's Eve 1993 remains one of the region's most infamous unsolved murders. Joining me now is Stephen Richards, who has written several books about the case. Steve, how did Viv Graham actually make a living? If I was to say um, a driver or a builder's labourer, then I would be correct in saying that. Um, he paid national insurance stamps for that activity. If I was to say he had a part-time job, if you like, on the other side of the fence as um, someone who was a protector, someone who empowered those people who weren't uh, given that chance, that opportunity to be empowered, then yes, I'd say that primarily his job was a one of protection. Is there actually a Newcastle underworld? Yes, there's a Newcastle underworld. Um, most of those Newcastle underworld are in prison now, serving quite long sentences. But certainly through a network, um, a grapevine if you like, where you start at one end um, and eventually get yourself to Mr Big, we have spoke with what I would class as the Mr Big of Newcastle, who would put Viv Graham to shame. When the man was asked if he would like to uh, be in the same book as Viv Graham, he turned around and said, um, to be in other words, you've got to be kidding, haven't you? Viv Graham wasn't a gangster. Now, on the surface, anyone could say that after Viv has gone. An incident took place in a pub on the quay side whereby this man had, uh, and this is from a third party, I don't wish to have anyone indicted for any um, crimes or so on, but anyway, this particular man related to me that Viv was asked to grab a man and keep a hold of him for another man, and there was a fee of £500. So, OK, £500, yep, Viv came along, grabbed the guy, arms around him, and sat him on the seat. There was £7,000 debt to pay, and don't forget this was within criminals, we're not talking a shopkeeper who owed back money to the council for rates, we're talking these are all criminals, and one criminal owed another one £7,000, Viv was paid 500 to make him sit in front of this guy. The guy's hands were on the table, this man pulled out a bowie knife and literally chopped one of the guy's fingers off. Now, this is when we really find out who the gangsters are and who those aren't. They've seen what happened. Let go of the guy that fast. The guy fell off the seat. Viv was down the stairs like a shot, and that was it. He'd seen the guy who'd done the chopping of the fingers off the following day and said, oh, hey, man, uh, I just can't, can't have anything to do with this. Oh, that was bad. That was really bad. Steve Richards, thanks very much.